Mm-hmm. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is going on? We are over here on Mad Mike Sports and also Champagne Confession Channel. We have the Originators Monday. This will be a duo, sh- a duel, a two part show today. So we're going to have the Originator side of things. Plus, we got a Champagne Confessions worthy conversation afterwards. So if you're on the mm-hmm. Champagne Confessions channel, um, give us about 25, 30 minutes, and we're going to get to that part of the show. But like I said, I'm your host, um, K Styles, a.k.a. The Six Man, a.k.a. The Shogun, and to my stage left, as y'all already know, uh, one-third of the heavy hitters, El Presidente, a.k.a. Senator Palpatine, Mad Mike Sports is in the building, y'all. What's happening? I, I gotta behave today, y'all. So I'm on. Yeah, I, 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 I could behave. be on punishment, possibly. Good. Yes. I mean, I'm. I am as, as, as president, co-founder of. So maybe I can get some leeway. Just maybe. Oh my God! What the hell did you do now? <laughs> all it's, right, always my fault. It's, it's always my fault so it, it, i mean you can oh. pick and choose pick and oh, choose. oh 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 welcome to my life i get that at work every day everything's my fault <laughs> i know i know i, I know and, 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 and if you you you've heard a work job, day for me you've heard a work day for uh, me yeah yeah i'm, I'm used to it from you <laughs> all right man we definitely appreciate everybody tuning in man like i said once again the disclaimer is this is a two-part show um we actually this is actually the second part is actually going to be a pilot for a brand new show as far as mm-hmm. talking on some serious topics involving either sports or some of the bullshit we done seen out here in these streets. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, y'all already know, man. Let's get right into it, man. It is. Well, yeah, it, we got to remember, it is the day after WrestleMania. So, you already know everybody going to be kind of tuned in, in and out over here. But we're going to make sure you definitely give everybody some love. Um, <clears throat> Going to go ahead and give them, them three-letter words, Mike, man. What we got for them? The... Um, the real what? <clears throat> Rip off. Rip off. Rip off. Rip off. Yeah. Roll call. Call call. Call call. And today's roll call, we're gonna we're gonna do it without the DJ today. So today's roll call, we're gonna kick it off with Anthony White. We got all oh, hell now. Oh no, hell no, y'all y'all done up and done it. <laughs> we got. Sherman Wood, got Maurice Martin, got Smooth C78, we got Station 18, Dirty Bird Dixon, we got Brian Peoples, Dre Murphy, the Georgia, Texas boy, we, we got we got Maggie here from the Champagne Confession Channel, we got Raymond Elder, Michael Walker, we got Dreddy, Q Lavender, Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. You made me want to. Never mind. I was about to say something. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> well, go ahead. Since you already put it out there. No, no. You see the lavender. See the, the cute lavender. Just like it, it. Just I was about to say something, but I'm gonna just keep my mouth shut this time. Yeah. yeah, yeah shut the hell up, Mike. We just gonna shut up. On that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to yeah, know what that is. Yep. Yeah, that, 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 look, I start. See, I got self control, y'all. See. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm yeah, growing, yeah. y'all. <coughs> Bullshit. But <laughs> <laughs> uh we got Dembo 80. All right, man. Let's go ahead and get right into it, y'all. Like I said, man. Um <clears throat> the first half of this show tonight, you're gonna get the originators, the originator conversation, the unholy alliance conversation. 
Uh, I want to know how everybody's doing this evening. How's everybody doing, Mike? How are we doing this evening, man? Is, 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 is everybody safe from the eclipse that was supposed to destroy the world today? Oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it was supposed to ruin the whole world. It, it was supposed I, to be a. It was supposed to be a zombie apocalypse today. I guess. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess it didn't yeah. happen. <laughs> I guess it didn't happen. I don't. I don't know. I, it was a whole bunch of panic going on, um, leading up until it. Um, I was listening to uh, my daily drive on uh, Spotify and got folks in that panicking and oh my god, it's going to be an eclipse. Oh my god, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> I like really, 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 we 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 is doing that. <laughs> what Southside said, I see the eclipse, and then we saw Kevin K. What the fuck was going on? <laughs> Man, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't nothing but them outside. That's all it was. It, it wasn't no damn eclipse. <laughs> but. Man, Mike, how we doing? How we doing this evening, man? No, that wasn't a zombie apocalypse. I'm just switching. That, 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 uh, I'm still here, y'all. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I know it's been a little bit of Falcon news that's been going on here the last couple of days. I know we signed a couple corners. Um, I know mm-hmm. the name that got a lot of people upset right now is uh, Falcon signing Kevin King. Um, I want to go ahead. I want to go ahead and get and they signed uh, another defensive lineman. Um, his name is Hyphenated, and I do not have my phone on me right now, so I can't give you the full name of it. Um, so I want to get your takes on that before we get to the first topic, man. Mm-hmm. Well. This guy's name, and I forgot to put the internet on uh, on this phone. So I hope. Uh, okay. Thank, 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 thank you, George. I, I, I forgot to turn. Smith Williams. I forgot. I don't know. Yeah, that's his name. All right. <laughs> let, let, let me. I, I, I got to connect myself back to the internet so I don't lag. Uh, yeah, Michael's trying bro, to. I'm, do I'm a just show. all over the place. Here, here, here. He, he was trying to do a show off of smoke signals right now, man. That's what that <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I, today, y'all, I pulled the case out. I, I, I fell asleep, all right? And you are lagging right now, so I know your ass is still trying to wake up. But uh, how do I feel? You still there, Mike? If you ain't, yeah, I, I'm still. Yeah, I, I okay. but yeah, okay. my bad. I, I fell asleep, y'all. I'm, I apologize. I fell asleep and I woke up like five minutes before. The yeah, I, yeah. Um, look. I mean, it's 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 Knight Rider. It's Kill. It's done. It's Sam, and it's Chauncey fault. They got me drunk. Maggie, all of them got me drunk this weekend, so it's all they fault. This. Yep, with, they got with, me drunk. With, with. You did, you did, you, you did. Nobody put the nobody, <laughs> nobody put the gun in your mouth to drink the beer, motherfucker. You're drunk. <laughs> so you was in consent <laughs> drinking the beer. That's what it was. <laughs> nah, I, I think, I think, nah, nah, I was. Just a like, all right, all right. I was about to yeah. say it was Diddy fault, but I don't want him to be coming at me because no, he's no, sensitive no, right no, now. No, so no, no, I no. allegedly. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All right, all right, all right. We, we good now, y'all. We good yeah. now. I, I, it was a joke, people, okay? I'm sorry, Diddy, all right? It was a joke. So. So what do you, so you think about And it? this ain't gin and juice, okay? This is not gin and juice. I just want to. That, yeah. I wouldn't mind trying to that gin and juice cocktail, by the way. Yeah, it, I know, it, I know. yeah. I mean, it looks kind of good. I know. Interesting. Right. So what do you think? Of, so so what do you think about the signings we got today? Um, I, I think, you know, for the most part, I think a lot of people were really 
kind of right. up in arms with it. But like, you got to understand, like, you have to have about ninety bodies uh, or so in training camp. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of those, a lot of those guys be coming from, you know, the leagues like the UFL, uh, who pretty much just got screwed uh, because of the NCAA. Uh, and you know the opening day for like it was just it was just a lot of stuff going on today. So they kind of got uh, WrestleMania. That was another thing they kind of got. But yeah, I, I think um, for the most part. And I just lost all train of thought. And I don't know what the fuck I was just what what you just say again. I, I don't know what the hell. Just, I just had a complete brain fart while talking. Like okay, all right. So, Bro, your what? eyes, your, your bug eyed ass, open your eyes so big you forgot what you was thinking. Okay, I'm I like, bro. Okay, yeah, I, <laughs> bro, I don't know what just happened. I just had a brain for a while. Yeah, but, I was talking. Yeah, like, how the yeah, hell? Did... Yeah, yeah, y'all just seen the first mad mic glitch. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I don't know what just happened, yo. I, I, I was just talking, and I was, I had some. I, okay, I was, I was thinking about something else, and then I was okay. trying to say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, here, here you go, man. Hey, hey, so, all so right, what did you what? Rewind. All right, mm -mm -mm. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Look, I have these, I have these quite often, uh, almost at least two or two, two or three times a day. Kid, kid, kid know that all. He, he, mm -hmm. It happens all the time. <laughs> it damn sure do. <laughs> they they call it a mad mic I, malfunction. <laughs> yeah, I, look, yeah, <laughs> look, yeah, I, I have, know. I think a lot faster than I talk. All right, that's that's all that is. All right, so 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 I about to say so. What did you think about the signings today? Okay, what yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, so I thought, you know, James for the most part. Um, what I'm looking at, I think he's a solid rotational piece and obviously a, a camp body. Um. But the thought that I had was really about that's what it was. I was thinking about Kevin King and I was talking about J uh, James Smith Williams. Um, but Kevin King, um, it was they were really kind of upset. A lot of people was upset on Twitter um, about all right, what did this mean for AJ Terrell? I mean, why are we bringing in guys that are quote unquote trash? And you know, at the end of the day, man, it's about camp bodies. You need at least. 90 to 100 guys and camp and training camp so you can kind of keep guys like um tyler algier b john robinson now for sure we need uh kirk cousins we need him sitting on the bench as long as possible all right uh he knows the offense is not this going to be a a, a pretty good, a easy transition for him being that it's um pretty much the same system the guys that he played with, offensive coordinator, coaches, and whatnot. So, uh, James Smith Williams, um, mm -hmm. he he's a he's a solid bookend, kind of similar to what we're getting from. It's kind of a smaller version of Taquan Graham, um, pretty big guy. Um, from what I saw, he looked like he was more close. He was closer to two eighty. Than 265 from what I saw. That the measure is the measure uh for him was about 264, 265, but I think he's close to 275, 280, um, for what I'm saying. So um, like I said, it's gonna be a camp body. Uh, we're gonna gotta get a lot of guys that's coming from um un undrafted free agents and coming up soon. But for the most part, man, I, I think Smith Williams. Um, I gotta get a nickname for him. I'm not gonna be saying that all year. Uh, but I, I think he's a comp body. And it's like from what I see, he's just a he's a he's a power rusher. Kind of what we already have with a guy like Zach Harrison. Mm. Mm. And well, like you said, you pretty much done summed it up. Like you said, it's, it's camp bodies right now. Um, like you said, they don't really have a lot of money like that, so they're going to have to get – these are going to be the kind of sign that they're going to make right now up until the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still waiting on some restructure so they can pay that draft class off too. So, hey, man. Well, see, we see, like I said, and your boy Hitman Helmsden changed his number to 23. I saw. So, I saw. So, 
So, so, so, so is he, he going to be what we're going to call him? Jump man, hell this year. Jump, <laughs> jump man. <laughs> jump man, hell That's what we're going to call oh, him. Jump yeah, man, hell Yeah, it got to be jump man, hell <laughs> But, hey, man. I ain't really got much to say. I mean, I haven't really seen much of Kevin King since that playoff game where everybody mm-hmm. called him trash. Yeah. Um, Williams, he done had a couple. He done had about seven sacks the last couple of years. So, hey, you never know. It, it, it could be one of those opportunities where somebody can turn the leaf. Mm-hmm. But – <laughs> Say the man said Ray Ray McLeod got 34. <laughs> oh, what? 34? 34. Uh, he said number 34. On a wide risk. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, I'm, hey. I, look, hey. I, I'm not. I, maybe he's oh. living out his oh, oh, uh, high oh. school fantasies or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I got to look at the numbers again. But, hey, I, it's, it's going to be all good. But let's go ahead and get right into the topic tonight, man. Mm-hmm. That hand. Okay, so I had this idea. I had this thought. I mean, actually, I think I'm not the only one, but I said I had this thought <laughs> where if we know what this regime is for the South is right, and it's always it is seemed like this has been happening since Terry Fontenot was got here, and we've kind of spoke on this. It's where we think they're going, they go the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. So the question is, and this is to the people watching, so y'all can give mm-hmm. y'all y'all can give y'all takes on this. What if? the Falcons draft an offensive lineman at eight. Mm. After all this talk we hearing about Dallas Turner and Latu and Jared Verse and Malik Neighbors and Romeo Adunze and Jalen Daniels and J.J. McCarthy, all these names, but it always end up being the guy that we don't never hear about. We may find out maybe the week before a draft based on some stories. So I ask you the question, Mike, how would you feel about that? And do you think that would be a logical sense for the situation that we're in right now? Um, that would be really interesting. I I think if that were the case, it has to be like a two part move, meaning that someone is going to be out, out the loop. Um, I I don't, at at this point, you have five offensive of linemen for the most part. And these guys are pretty, pretty much established. Um, but if 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 this happens, man, I, I think somebody may be thinking about re- uh, retirement uh, a lot. Hmm. I, I think that would happen. So it's like at this point in time, when you got guys that's been in the league ten years or so, um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he's, he's well over ten years. So it's like maybe he doesn't want to be his father. Maybe he doesn't want to play for you know like it's like it's, like maybe he doesn't want to play for that you know, damn near 20 years so it's like if that were the case um the falcons have known have been known to take offensive linemen from teams when there's a run on guys like they arizona did it to them and they did it to dallas dallas was really um looking to get um Bergeron, Bergeron in there. Like they were looking to get. Hey, hey, Juice said they better not do that. I look. I already. That's that's what I was looking at. I'll be. I'll be honest with you. I agree with that. I. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't take no offensive lineman Mm -mm. unless I was picking like close to the last, the end of the first round. If the Falcons Mm -hmm. traded that far back, 
because there are actually a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of offensive linemen in this draft this year. I heard there was going to be a run on them. Like they're expecting to run on offensive linemen somewhere in the middle of the. Because you got Morgan out of Arizona, you got Mims out of Georgia, uh, Patrick Paul out of Houston, uh, the dude from Penn State whose name I cannot pronounce to save my life, a uh, Formule uh, well, uh, whatever the hell his name is. You got the other guy from Oregon State, Fuazi, for for for, for weight. Damn it. Fugazi, Fugazi. That's, Fugazi, uh, got that. We're Fugazi. Gonna go Fugazi. All right, we're going to hit that in Fugazi. Fugazi. Yeah. Um, so you, so eight for me would be too high, especially after them drafting Bergeron last year, who mm -hmm. was a first-round great offensive lineman that slipped. Well, he, they brought he, back he, Storm Morton. Uh, Storm Norton. Uh, did I get the name right? Yeah, they Storm brought back Storm Morton. Norton. Yeah. So, um, I wouldn't highly advise. Like I said, at eight, you got a lot of money tied up into this offensive line, so it wouldn't. Really yeah, sense. it wouldn't. But what That's does it? But what it does has it to be make? A two part. Yeah. But what does it make sense can end up slapping you in the face. <laughs> We've been part of that before. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, like you said, said yeah, so I see a lot of people in here, man. They like, oh, uh, I don't know. It, yeah, like you said, eight is a little bit too high for that position, right? Right then and there. Um, so what you, so when you're talking about two part, Mike, mm -hmm. what's the second part that has, you said the second part would be Jake math, either Jake Matthews retiring or somebody, somebody dealing with some type of, uh, personal issue or just, uh, uh, you know, an undisclosed injury that just like, you know, didn't go as well. We've seen players, football players just up and Retire out of nowhere. Oh, here's the why. Oh, oh here's, the, here's the why we don't give a shit about the Eddie Goldman signing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> until so he, until, until he actually goes through with it, right? Until he actually steps on the field and actually play game one. I look, I'm not expecting him to come back. But like I said, things like this happen in, in football. So, like I said, for me, man, it's like anything can happen, and teams you know, willing to offer you certain said things because, you know, like I said, the league is changing for the most part. So um, I, th I think the thing is, man, is to always expect the unexpected. We have this saying here, um, as we don't damn know, we, we give you guys highly researched facts, Great, right? That's what we do. We do highly researched facts. So if we can't find any trails or there's not a history of said things, like like I said, we've seen it before. We've seen guys like even for the Dallas Cowboys, I forget the guy, the uh the guard that end up, you know, sides like something happened with his knees. Some something happened where he is I don't I think he was just out for the season or did he just Oh, uh, you talking left? about you talking about is you talking about Zach Martin? Yeah, yeah. Something oh, happened. I think I think he had uh I thought they was it leukemia or something like that. I I, it was something that. like it was something it was like disease, that. it was a disease or something. And God forbid that, all right. God forbid that happened. But things like things happen like this in life. So like I said, man, it's like you you, you just have to be prepared for every situation. And I think that's the what the Atlanta Falcons are doing. They want to be prepared for any scenario and that's what that's the importance of depth. Right. Because looking at that position at eight is it, it's very it did could I I'm I'm looking at it and and when I pop when this question popped in my head and I'm and I'm I'm looking at it is what is it it, it kind of goes what you were saying as far as what does the future hold for certain guys on this offensive line? I mean, you pretty much, you've pretty much solidified Chris Lestrom as being an anchor. Mm -hmm. You're building Bergeron up to be the the other anchor at the other guard spot. 
Now, you're brave. Now, now you've switched the offensive philosophy, and you don't know if Caleb McGarry is ready for that transition to a pass happy offense. Because as we know him, we know him as a mauler. He, like I said, un- uh-huh. under a run first system, that's where he does his best work. So, it can 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 McGarry make that transition? Do you still have a succession plan for Jake Matthews? Are you confident in Drew Dahlman past this season? So these are a lot of the questions that we really have to look at because you don't you don't sign Kirk Cousins to the money that you do and pick a court and, 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 and interesting enough is that that's why what Jay did said this question right here. Is it starting year one to central like draft of at eight to six? Like I said, if if the Falcons would have picked up a guy like Gardner Minshew or something like that, a guy that you know that okay, he's just gonna be here for a few games, you would have been better. You you that would make more sense drafting a quarterback that high. But problem is you're expected, you're expected uh <laughs> Kirk Cousins play at least three years. Mm-hmm. So, what you get your take on that, man? What what you what you think? What you think about that notion? As far as Jays, um, as far as would it be a good idea? You personally, you think it right now? Would you believe that it would be a good idea? To draft them at eight, or would it be better suited if they would if they were looking at O line to trade back mid first round for it? I mean, <sighs> yeah, it's a tough question. It's a tough question because <laughs> they. Uh, don't, they didn't hit so much depth in this damn draft. We don't. Yeah, really know it's, it's, that's that's what because like I, there is not a defensive guy in this draft that like just steps out. Like I, I just don't see it. I think these guys are solid players, but they need a lot of coaching. Um, the coaching end is just like this. This one the draft where we we clearly see there's a deficiency in in coaching in college. Like it, it, like it went when you have a, when you have a draft when you look at and you see nobody that say, all right, this guy's the clear number one, and I, I don't think sweet thing, uh, baby Jesus needs, I, I don't think nobody see him and say, um, that he's clearly number one, all right, he he's clearly not number one. It's like you don't see anybody, um, in this draft that says like. He's clearly that guy. Uh, then we got, um, we got baby, we got baby uh, Hello Nada up here at Texas. He want to drown, run around drinking like a dang fool, and he ain't even drafted yet. So we it's go, like we go, we gonna say that we gonna say that topic for later on. We, all right, all right, yeah, we we definitely gonna get that. Like, but like that, that is some BS. You don't do you don't do that. <laughs> and I just we literally just spoke on that. I, I spoke on that situation, but like I said, that's a whole other topic. We gonna get into that. But mm-hmm. like I said, I I don't think it's a I don't think it's a smart. I, I don't think it, it is smart. Um, because you always want to have options, but I think there are options in the second and you know outside the first round as far as defensive guys is concerned because like i said i don't see any guy that say he's clearly the number one defensive player i don't see anybody in this draft that's like that y'all can y'all can y'all can dallas turner y'all asses to death you ain't going to da- dallas turner me i've seen him play against alabama uh against georgia and i've seen him play against other team i was not taken back back by him at all i'm like this but i don't <laughs> Who the hell is gonna get at this part? I'm I'm just looking like, okay, well, 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 what it do? That that that's all my thing is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, Bergeron can play tackle as well. Storm Norton, again, that's why I'm saying Storm Norton, he's another guy that can play both. He got the athleticism to play mm-hmm. both tackle positions. You got Jarvis in the building, man. What's going on, man? How you doing, Jarvis? All right, man. We see some open. We got about whatever in the building. Scotty Robinson. Like you said, said, one third of the heavy hitters. The ministers in here. Um, I think I said Tyler. We got Eric Matt. Definitely appreciate y'all coming in. Mucho Grundy. But, um, Y'all make sure y'all go ahead and hit that like button as you're coming in. It is free, y'all. It is free. Uh-huh. So we definitely appreciate that. We got a rutabaga in the building, y'all. Um, but <clears throat> but I want to get at least about five more minutes on this topic before we get to the other part of it. Me. I don't know. I like I said, like I said, I, I think I think I could do I think I could do better than getting that tackle right there if it was like a dire necessary need. And the problem is is even though we do have the questions on whether Caleb McGarry can transition to a, a passing offense, come be a better suited from a run offense. Is yet to be determined. But the thing about it is, how that money gonna hold up? Mm-hmm. Can Drew Dahlman get on the same page with Kirk Cousins as far as making line calls? Because that that's the next part of his game that he has to get better at. I I will say it's easier when you have a veteran quarterback there, he's making all the calls for the most part. So he, uh, like, now he can stop thinking because when, when you have a younger quarterback, um, they haven't seen um, the NFL. Um, and, and especially when you have two young guys like that, they're learning on the fly. So I, I think he, like, I think Drew Dalton is going to take a, a major step to be one of the better centers in the league because he got a he got a veteran thinking for him now. He doesn't right. have to think. And look, right. I'm I'm tired of seeing him dribble like he got damn Steph Curry. Okay, we need we tired. Oh, of oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Three. <laughs> <laughs> right, boy, boy, trying out for the College Park Skyhawks over there, boy. You mm-hmm. know, we'll see Drew Dahlman playing power four. Right. <laughs> But but Southside, this is the most honest answer that I think I've seen in here. He like, bro, I don't even know who I want at eight at this point. I uh, that's right, it. Look, that's it. That's it. Like it. You, like I said, 2021. Everybody thought we was getting this guy. You ended up getting Calvin. Mm-hmm. 2022, we thought we was getting Jordan. Everybody and their mama thought we was getting Jordan. Mm-hmm. Drake London. Everybody thought we was getting Jalen Carter last year. Mm-hmm. B. John Robinson. Just saying. So this is this is the question that we have to ask, and and, and, and Juan put it out there. Coach put it out there. Like you said, the OGs put it out here. The AF the, the AFN family put it out here. We don't damn know. When we're thinking one thing, they're going the other way. Mm-hmm. We don't know. These motherfuckers might trade back and get a goddamn linebacker in the first round. That's 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 quite <laughs> that is a possibility, y'all. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is is for whoever you want as a fan, think of the complete opposite as well. Yo, 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 yo. This, he just he just jumped in like he uh like never mind. I was about to say something. Like, How you doing, OG? Hello, Michael. Oh my god. 
So we doing that. And we doing this today. Okay. What's going? What's going? Y'all, uh, hold on. Hold, let, let me say something real quick before we gonna get to that, that uh, our our next topic. But, uh, truth. Yes, sir. Yeah, you you really apologized to me yesterday. Okay, he accused me. He 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 accused me, y'all, of trying to tell him what the fuck to to think about. So. That really, that really did hurt my feelings. He said, "Michael, I say what the fuck I want to say." So he, he really hurt my feelings with that earlier today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michael. He said, "Quote unquote, quote." All right, not not exact quote, but he said, "Who the fuck are you to tell me? I do what the fuck I think." What? So yeah. I'm so I'm sorry, Michael. Okay, that's 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 fine. I I sent you a post. Really, we we literally we really had to do that. Like, yeah, he, he hurt. <laughs> that hurt my feelings, man. That really did hurt my feelings. I said I was sorry, Michael. I I, I accept it. <laughs> All right, goddamn it, man, y'all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, if y'all would have heard, if y'all would have heard that altercation, right? Man, that, <laughs> See, they think. Listen. A lot of people is, uh, is under the misconception that Michael robots us, but they have no idea. <laughs> we cuss each other out like we don't know each other. Right. Exactly. All right. So I'm glad you hear truth. Now we about to really get into the 36. real, the real topic for the night. Oh, oh damn. I thought yeah. I had done escape. I thought I had done no, escape. Sir. Oh, no, sir. No, 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 mm -mm. no, 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 nope. no. We about to get into this. You so, came in right in time. I right in time. So, so right here, the ladies did not get hacked. But this right here is going to be the new show idea. This topic right here. Are you ready? You ready, truth? We done see, oh we done, we done see. All right. Woke culture in sports talk. Oh, this is the champagne confessions part of the show, y'all. Um, So, Mike, you want to go ahead and give them the synopsis of what, of, of, of what we're talking about here? Yeah, so the this particular concept um, is well, we kind of want to give you guys kind of a, a um, you know kind of bring to light some some issues you know that we see uh, in in not only in the sports world but in world. Uh, today for the most part and one of these things are um that we're going to talk about right now is actually you know something that we see that may be a concern um as far as the the caitlin clark angel reese situation and oh, shit. yeah so <laughs> Uh yeah, we about to really get live on this, man. Um, you, you really said you, Mike, Mike, Mike K Styles, y'all some dirty. <laughs> ain't nobody mm -hmm. set you up. <laughs> ain't nobody set you up, man. But basically, what Mike is talking about is this conversation dealing with the women's basketball tournament mm -hmm. where. It's been this ongoing debate between Clay, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese that's been dating back to last year with the you can't see me gestures. And it's all and, and it almost seems like they are they used what I call this. This basket, this is kind of a basketball rivalry. It, it, I, I'm gonna call it a basketball rivalry because, like you said, these are the two hottest names in basketball right now. Like you said, even though you got Juju Watkins who's balling her ass off at USC, 
You got the Brazilian chip. Shout out to South Carolina for winning it all as they defeated Iowa. And shout out to Don Staley. Um, but the problem that I the problem that we're seeing is is people using this Angel Reese versus Caitlin Cart situation to turn turn that game into one big giant race war. Mm-hmm. And, and we want to, like I said, I, w- I want to make this clear too. We, we, this is not going to be Mad Mike Sports. This is Champagne Confession. So it's like this, this is going to have a completely different tone. It's not going to be, you know, us screaming, yelling, and doing what we typically do. This is, you're getting us, all right, the real us at this point in time. Yeah, this is no longer K style. This is Kevin. Mm-mm. This is right. This now you getting to see Michael, okay? <laughs> what Chauncey says, Michael Anthony. You getting to see Michael Anthony, right? Michael now. Anthony, Kev, and Big Chauncey. And I'm and, and I'm Chauncey Morris. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is this is what you guys getting right now. This is the real us. All right, no, no, you know, antics and all of it. You're getting our real thoughts, our real thoughts and this is kind of what we want to speak on so i just wanted to be clear with that all right so all all, all, we're gonna need so new, all the people that we're gonna was watching on champagnes yeah we're gonna need a new we're gonna need a name for it we're gonna let y'all mm-hmm. pick the name for it like yeah said, pick the name for this show for us so everybody on champagne confessions right now like i said we this this is uh, we're kind of debuting this concept and like i said we want to speak on some real issues that have plaguing just you know the world right now all right this this is what we're going to speak on so we're going to see a lot of uh sports topics but these sports topics are going to be based on real life situations and how we can make these things better but go ahead case that my bad now now as we already know this situation came down to where it all started where iowa defeated lsu what was that? The Elite Eight? Was that the Elite Eight? Um, yeah, I don't think it was the Elite Eight. Eight, eight yeah. And you had a lot of people that were so upset about LSU losing to Iowa. That you have folks literally out here trying to search under Caitlin Clark's name to see if they can find some old racist tweets of hers. Mm -hmm. My thing about it is, is who the fuck cares? Got that LSU had a good season. Iowa had had a better season because they beat them to get. To the championship game. <clears throat> and and the problem is, is we're having this situation where you have a bunch of people online or people in these conversations. And what what do I call? What do I call them, Chauncey? The fake woke crowd. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, you know, that thing, you know, that's one of the one of the things that just burns my biscuits and i'm gonna say that is when you try to mix sports with social issues or whatever the case like we have to deal with that enough in our everyday life and i and i try to tell people to keep that shit separated you know if you want to talk about some social social shit or social issues or symbolism or culture or anything like that uh i i do talk that on my channel as well but i try to keep the sports part separated this bullshit that's going on between these these two phenomenal athletes you know they 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 are some phenomenal athletes okay one happens to be the quintessential Hood chick, and a, and, a, and a, listen, I say that respectfully. I mean, she, she is the, she is the Bayou Barbie for a she's reason. She's the Bayou Barbie. Okay, she's the she's the TikTok queen. 
she got her own podcast. I think I'm not sure if Caitlin got her own podcast, but you know she got her own podcast, and she is what she is what symbolizes a certain a group of people. Mm -hmm. Then you got Caitlin Clark, and the 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 the, the stereotypes about this young lady is mind blowing. You know, yeah. a lot of people are painting the picture of this young lady as being some real fucked up ass snobbish ass white girl who who uh, uh who got a racist daddy. I'm just calling it for what it is. But in all actuality, she's just a phenomenal basketball talent. Mm -hmm. All right. But you know, if you you know, hey, the GOAT conversation, I let y'all have you know, y'all can have a GOAT conversation because in the end of the day, and in the final analysis about this, Mike and K Styles and, 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 and everybody in the chat, it's about it, uh, it's all opinionated anyway. It's all opinionated. Who I think the goat may not be, who Mike thinks the goat, and whoever Mike thinks the goat might not be, who K Styles and, and, and Chelsea thinks the goat. It's just that simple. All right, all right. You know, a lot of people putting stipulations on on the greatest of all time. You know, a, a lot of folks are saying she's not the greatest of all time. How can you be the greatest of all time if you don't have a championship? Okay, all right, that's cool. That's good for a debate. But leave it, but leave it there. You know, don't sit up here and, and box. I'm going to talk to my black folks. Don't y'all box other black folks in because y'all in y'all feelings and got a string up y'all ass because the team that y'all wanted didn't win. And don't box all the other black, black folks in and make them feel as if, though, they're in the – uh, uh, and I'm going to use the word, uh, 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 what do they call it, buck dancing and cooning. That shit weak as fuck. And if you want to, you want, I'm going to tell you, I'm talking about, you want to really get up under my skin, go to talking that weak ass, weak ass shit there, because that's what it is. It's weak. It's a pity party. You know, it's, it's just all about, because you ain't got what the, uh, you ain't being told what you want to be told, and whatever you wanted to happen didn't happen. Shit sound kind of familiar, don't it, fellas? And I'll leave it to y'all. Yeah. And, <clears throat> kind of where, kind of where OG was going with it, though. Um, Mike, I want to kind of get your thoughts on that. Uh, as far as the idea that you are a coon or a, a buck dancer, if you don't choose a side in a situation that ain't got nothing to do with you. Let me clear something up real fast before you go that case stop. Um, I can't say I can't. Is that, is that Chanel or Channel? Um, listen, channel, don't channel, miss, channel, please, channel keys. Listen, don't please don't mistake what I meant when I use the <laughs> word culture. I understand about culture and sports. I understand that co completely. But when it but when it consumes us to the point. The way you start accusing folks of being racist, being a lot, you know, when you start play, basically playing a race card in sports, that's what I mean. So, okay, I'm sorry. It, Go ahead. It, but the thing about it is, racism has always been in sports, but we continue to watch it. Racism been in sports since the 1800s. Hell, be honest with you, shit. They've been playing sports since BC times. But my thing is, where where does where do we draw the line as far as having the conversation about the game and focusing solely on the game itself without trying to victimize ourselves? trying to victimize people and demonize others to make us feel good about the person we rooting for not winning. What you got on that, Mike? <laughs> well, I, I don't think 
I, the thing is, in here is, um, we have to get first of all. There, there is two things that I uh, like on this particular subject that I <clears throat> that I want to kind of get clear. Uh, first, we have everyone is in this category. Like everybody wants their opinion to be validated to a certain degree and a certain extent um and that's just being human it's like you want to feel like what you what you think you feel um that people actually care about that like i said that's just a human as, as much as we try to deny this to be the case that everybody at some point you know others you know are a lot less uh patient or they don't think about it as much as others as far as the validation is concerned the affirmation some people live for the affirmation some people seek these affirmations and I, I, again these are just this is just part of being human so that's that's fine but i think where we should draw the line is the second one i think this is the problem is because it's the culture in the world today and like i said i've been i've been that myself i've been egotistical like y'all see how my life so it's like when i'm when i feel like when i feel like i'm in my zone it's hard for me to come down especially when i'm like in full rent mode like there's, there's a reason why i'm called mad mike okay once I feel it, it's hard for me to come down from that. That's why like I try to limit myself because I know my ego. Once I start, I'm like it's hard for me to stop. I'm I'm in full go. I'm in full uh, look, I'm in full mode. I'm in full mad mic mode. Y'all seen I can go two, three hours straight just being in that mentality. So when it comes down to it, I think this particular issue everybody wants to force how they feel on a particular subject and they want everybody to hear them i think that's the thing you cannot force people to feel the way that you feel about a particular subject and i think everybody having and and the craving um for these likes the craving for these um the retweets you know the impressions oh i got a million impressions for this tweet and i got a million likes for this tweet like that's fine but i think in this particular uh aspect and i'm i'm just gonna speak for me man one of the things for me that i have to balance is me because like if I if y'all knew how many attacks that I get on the like I'm I'm getting attacked for any and every, everything always my fault. <laughs> it's always my fault. All right. Mm -hmm. If somebody does something, it's gonna find a way to get back to me. If somebody say something that has I'm not in nowhere in that conversation, it's going to come back to me. So when I look at these two women the two lovely ladies and it's highly disrespectful to talk about these ladies where they grew up both black and white okay it's highly disrespectful you wouldn't want it to you want you wouldn't want that same thing to happen to you i know one of the things that eats me up is people just look at me and say mike yeah, you, you you were born in summer here. You are eight year veteran. I've been on every side of Atlanta there is. I've been a part of it, damn near every part of Atlanta is. And they assume just how I look and how we speak and how we talk. Yeah, you a hood dude. Not knowing that I'm look, I build websites. I'm in the um, coding. I've been in all types of stuff. If y'all knew all our talents, a lot of the things that you assume. We've been a part of other people's shows. We have confidence. 
from people that are not only professional athletes but journalists these people respect our platform and then the way that we speak and we talk you assume that we some quote unquote gangsters we've been labeled these by a lot of people just say yep you some hooligans, y'all some. So when I look at people say these things about Caitlyn, and when I see them talking about Angel, like y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't even know these women like this. But you throw them into a, y'all throw him into a pot and say, "Yep, Caitlyn is this, and Angel is this." Hmm. To your point, Mike, oh, and I want to say something. Real go, 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 let, let, no, go ahead, you, go ahead, you. Yeah, to your point, Mike. See, a lot of people, a, a lot of people have really, have really profiled me. A lot of people think I'm just this crazy ass OG who done who got some really real work in the streets. And to a degree, some of that's true. But how old y'all when y'all found out that I'm the I'm the general manager of a personal care facility and I that, that I'm a care that I'm a caregiver? How many of y'all how old y'all y'all found out that I'm I'm certified and registered by the state of Georgia to do that? You know, so it, it, the stereotype shit got to stop, you know. So I, mm. I see people are kind of triggered about the culture word. No need to ask us, do we know about culture? No, because yes, we do. Yes, we do. My daddy grew up in Mississippi in the in the bad times of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. and my mom, my mom, a West Side girl from from Atlanta. She's from the West Side. West side, best side. So we know all about the culture. I got aunts and uncles and stuff who done marched with Dr. King. I haven't told y'all to heard that shit, but that's the truth. All right. So I, it, it's just, you know, I, excuse me, I just had to, y'all know, know I'm rude as fuck. I interrupt. So go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, you good. But kind of going with what Mike was saying, like like you said, if y'all if have learned the kind of labels, um, let's see. We've embraced being the bad guys. We embrace being the villains. We've been called a cult, bully talk, demons, hood, hood boogers. We're a cult. I'm a cult leader. They call me Charles Manson. Like, I'm a cult leader. <laughs> I, I, and this, this is from a guy that called himself a Christian that said, I'm a cult leader. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Rem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rem. Uh, uh, wasn't that Rem? Uh... No, 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 no. We're not talking about names. No, we're not doing that. Okay. We're not doing Oh, like I said, okay. hood boogers, demons, um, the antichrist. Like, this is stuff that I've heard. Um, mm -hmm. Bully talk, the bully talk brigade. That that's that that's a brand new one. I have I, I, that 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 threw me off guard. And like you said, hold on, K Styles. I gotta put this out. I gotta put this out real fast. Look, a dude actually, not, not, not. <laughs> go ahead. A dude, <laughs> I a hear dude this. actually, a dude actually misrepresent, well, misinterpreted a, 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 a show that I did on my channel as a threat. That, that gentleman and I, we discussed it as men, but I'm like, bro, I wasn't even talking about that. Like, you know, Oh, you breaking oh, up! You breaking oh, up, OG. Okay, my bad. Y'all go ahead. <clears throat> no, no, go ahead. You sound. Oh, better. go ahead, go ahead. You, you better. You was just breaking up there for us. Now, y'all, y'all know I got to the house. When I get to the house, uh, uh, every goddamn thing going on up in here. Look here. Hey, I'm gonna. Hey, listen. I'm gonna hand it out to y'all. I'm gonna watch from a distance because my my signal about to get bad. But I'm locked all the way in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. All right. Hey, man, hey, hey, go ahead, go ahead, plug, go ahead, go ahead, plug the channel before you get off, man. Truth with a two TV. Hey, hey, I'm hey, I'm 25 away from 200, baby boy. Hey, I'm I, hey, I'm getting there, baby. Hey, <laughs> I'll be getting me some bread soon. <laughs> Y'all holiday, exactly. man. I'll see uh -huh. you guys this Friday. We're gonna do uh, this Friday, 6 6 p.m. WrestleMania, WrestleMania 40 recap. Okay. Okay. I'm out, baby. Hey, hey man. Hey, look. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for the truth. But 
But yeah, like Billy Power Max said, I know we had this comment up here for a little while. He said, people who proclaim to be woke or virtuous were people to stay divided so they can keep relevance. And this right here is mm. the con this is why I kept this comment up here because mm. this right here is a very powerful statement because And because not only have we seen this with this Caitlin Clark Angel Reese thing, but this is the very same conversation we have here in Atlanta between Michael Vick and Matt Ryan. Mm -hmm. So it's an issue. So it's not necessarily just a female basketball issue. Mm -hmm. It's a greater this is, issue. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is a this is a social issue within our community to where if you support somebody that may play for your team or you support a team that okay may not look uh, just like a person a uh, mentality a, a person that may not be of the popular or as in this case as falcon fans may be still be in here If you're a Falcon fan, you go through the Michael Vick era and was a fan of Mike Vick, it's cool. But after the whole situation with Mike Vick, they move on to Matt Ryan, and now you're a fan of Matt Ryan, now it's a problem. But these are the very same quote-unquote fake woke folks that work for those folks. <laughs> you see what I did there, right? Mm -hmm. no, I, I, no, I see exactly what it is. <laughs> but the thing is, man, regardless of, like I said, regard, like I said, regardless on who you like, you may, you may like once, you may like one player that may not be black. You may white like a player that is black. You may like a player that may be Latino. You may like, like I said, the end of the day. Do not use sports figures to fight your goddamn woke policies. Y'all about sound as bad as Umar Johnson out here who 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 claims to be pro-black and keeps talking about money and ain't build a goddamn school that he said he was going to build back in 2010. How about that? And to give, like I said, on top of that to what you're saying, it's like we don't realize we, we're using these women's name for something they never signed up they never signed up for this mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't want to talk about black and white issues they didn't she didn't want to be bullied she put she didn't want to receive death threats both of these women are receiving death threats mm -hmm. like i like i said for me i like i'm on a much lower scale than what they are and i've gotten it okay so this is a like you don't know what you're doing to see to these types of people because they might not have been through the things that I've I look I've <laughs> I've been through some crazy situations you know what I'm saying where people have literally threatened me to see me at certain places and say yep yeah, you better watch your back you know stuff like that like okay all right so but like I said these are women. They might not. They might not have the same temperament to, as I do. They might be really afraid of somebody doing things like this. And like I said, especially these type these days, like you have to be. <laughs> I know, kid. I know, but you have to be careful about this because people, some people just aren't, aren't. You know, they haven't been raised the way that I've, I was just saying like that, that some people just not built that way. Some people just want, um, they don't want any, those types of problems. So like I said, man, it's, you have to be really careful about, cause these ladies, they, they, they barely 24. I don't even think they 24 yet. And we putting on this level of like, it's, it's just, it's a dangerous precedent that you have to stick because it's only going to get worse because these ladies are going to have money and when you have money you have access to drugs to alcohol to mm -hmm. toxic people it's only going to get worse so we got to treat these women like they like they're real people man 
They're not superheroes. They're put in positions to be said superhero. My thing is, my thing is, don't use a situation like this to 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 be your shield. Mm-hmm. Your shield of your own um, insecurities. That, 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 I'm, I'm gonna say it like that. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> woke. Is like one of the it's like it's a word, it's just like the word term edge rusher. Rope just cringes me for some reason because it's like when you're thinking about the term being woke, you're thinking you're thinking about I don't like that term either. Like I said, when you're thinking about the term woke, it's like enlightenment or of learning something new or of embracing a new idea so you have been woken to the idea that's like saying okay i'll use me for example how many of y'all i mean i'm gonna take older how how many i'm gonna take og's approach how many of y'all were were such and such year old where you found out that your boy k style don't like to read <laughs> Yeah, I, am not, I, I am not a bookworm. Mm-mm. I look like a bookworm, but I'm not a bookworm. <laughs> I he the one who got me into reading uh the audio books. Yeah. That's how he consumed information. But the thing about it is, is as I got older and I've embraced more so, and 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 and, and, and Sheldon kind of helped me with the books too. But the thing oh, is Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, but the thing about it is, is I when I, as I got older, I've embraced it. I've woken up to reading and gathering information about certain things, whether it be f- philosophical, psychological, history, um, finances, or something like that. But that's me awakening to new information. Mm-hmm. See, this problem is, is you got these people. Who who got who who put on these fake dashikis and stuff, thinking that oh yeah I'm like this, but the problem is is they only do it if another race is fucking with them. When we got own elements in our own communities that's <laughs> fucking us up over, where they at? Let me show you where they at. Hold on. <laughs> Nowhere to be found. They disappeared. David Copperfield. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be woken to our own identity as black folks, we got to do it all the way. We have to we 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 not only do we have to hold accountability for other people fucking with us, but we have to hold accountability to ourselves. Starts with the end. You can't make a change if you're not changing yourself, and that's the thing. It's like that's that's like it, it's for me. I have a I have a prop. See me. I I have a, a a personal uh issue with not living up to what I say. Like for me, it hits me hard when I'm feel like I'm being. I'm not being truthful or I'm not being honest in the situation. I can't sleep. Me, I don't look, I'm not Kev, I'm not anybody else. Me personally, when I feel like I'm not giving my authentic self, you're not seeing all of me. <laughs> I'm talking about all of me. I have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I've stopped, I've stopped myself in mid-sentence before, you know, that I, I go on saying something. It's like, all right, I, that's not what I really meant. And I would say, you know what? If that, mm-hmm. I'm going to say exactly. You've heard me in case I say that all the time. Look, that's probably why we got, we Dan and brothers right now. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the same way. We said literally mid sentence. No, if that, this is what we going to go. So, like I said, at, at the end of the day, man, I think you really have to be able to live the way that you're des- like you, if you're going to live it if you're going to speak it man you better be living it you mm. better be living it 
because at the end of the day, it's going to find a way. The truth will out. Okay. I have this saying, everybody know that saying from Harry Potter, from Professor Dumbledore himself, the truth will out. You can try to hide it all you want. The truth will always find a way out and it will slip up at the, at the least expected moment. So I think a lot of these people really try to hide who they are on social media but you get behind and something dramatic happens where we see an angel Reese lose. And then we see these quote unquote woke people attacking Caitlin, Caitlin Clark, you know, for this, she, she's a young lady, bro. like she's barely 25. She ain't even 20 yards, 25 yet. What are we doing? These are, these are babies, bro. Mm -hmm. They have not grown. They have not grown yet. And we putting them through absolute like a lot of these people, man. Like I said, they, a lot of a lot of our issues is really us mm -hmm. and how we really feel. And then you get on social media, it just become a magnified. It just right. become a magnified glass. It right. really blows us up. So like I said, I, I think you know, that's the case, man. Just like let these women grow, right? Mm -hmm. Before that's 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 the thing. All right. So I'm about to say we're gonna go ahead and give everybody their time back, man. Like you said, man. I think that was a conversation. Um, we still looking for those new show names, y'all. So um we try we trying to give we trying to give y'all, like I say, y'all have already seen Champagne Confessions. Mm -hmm. the male version of it uh -huh. um, so um, please leave our leave your comments about again we're looking for show ideas and this is i, I know we confuse uh a few people <laughs> uh, a few people as far as the topic concerned but this is what we want we 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 confuse everybody so this is for everybody on champagne confessions we're going to use a lot of you know real topics to discuss all right mm -hmm. it's going to be sports related it's going to be entertainment related hey it, it, it might be all types of uh ideas but again this like is you you're getting michael anthony right here okay you get michael anthony and you getting kevin jerome over here so yeah mm -hmm. anime what, what's going on well, I mean, I just want to show my face. I know everybody's kind of confused, like you said, what's going on and everything else. This is just the pilot. This is the test. See how you guys are feeling it. Um, mm -hmm. We we just been really, really wanting to bring the concept of, um, of course, we talk about sports all day. But at the end of the day, it gets really real. You know, these players are bullied. Uh, there's a lot of high expectations. Like you said, the threats. The everything but at the end of the day you got to realize these players these athletes these coaches are humans mm -hmm. family men or members fathers mothers children that go through health things except you know exec you know so it's like you got to forget you for, you see this athlete like they're a hero and they don't have any flaws and things like mm -hmm. that so um, we did a two part. This is kind of give a idea of how you guys feel about the real topics. It's not going to be the concept of the, you know, full show. I see some mm -hmm. Falcons eye view. Um, so more into the mental health aspect of sports and entertainment, because of course mm -hmm. we can talk about CTE wrestling, all right. types of things. So mm -hmm. this is just a palette. So just bear with us as we, you know, get this going. I think, Everybody's liking the concept now of you guys just being raw and real. Mm -hmm. It's kind of where I want to go with it. So, y'all, yeah, leave your feedback. We want to know what your show ideas are. Drop it on the comments. Leave it to Matt, Mike, and K Styles, myself. Let us know what you're feeling. How are you feeling it? I got Malt you. liquor confessions. Yeah, you know, because, you need a sip of that. So, because, because I, because I'm about to say, this is going to be very interesting because, um, uh, there's some stuff out. There's some stuff I want to get off my damn. Oh channel. boy, y'all have no idea what's <laughs> it. I, again, y'all heard us say this. You have no idea what be going in the mind of these two. Look, we we got a lot to say. So, like I said, man, 
we appreciate everybody for just being um, patient with us. This is something that's been years in the making, and we're finally comfortable to actually kind of uh, show this part of us. Like I said, man, I, I just like being transparent. Uh, I have a major problem, uh, and I like I, I can't hide before I, I like I, I have to get it out. I have to get it out. All right. So, um, so, so the thing is, so the thing is, I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't think a lot of people is going to be really feeling it because I ain't going to say a lot of people. There's going to be some that may not feel the idea of us kind of being real because mm -hmm. uh, we've already been labeled the, de <laughs> the, the demons of the Atlanta Falcon content. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing with Champagne Confessions. This is a different audience that understands the concept. Yeah. So right. it's going to it's kind of going to separate the week, the week from the fake, you get, you right. know, the week from the, you know, people that just are more in tune with what's what needs to be discussed. You know, right. as I saw a couple of comments, it's like you guys are addressing things that most people will not. Now, they mm -hmm. may not go over in the Atlanta Falcons Nation world and Matt Mike sports because, of course, they just want to just give me the facts and stacks about that player. Mm -hmm. So. It's a transition to like you come on over to Champagne Confessions because this is where we're going to really deep dive in it. We're not just going to talk about the Falcons. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, the accusations of players, you know, what's happening with them, um, the injustice of players, mm -hmm. you know, and it is more than just players at that. It's just whatever is happening right now. No ditty. Let's get mm -hmm. real. So right. they may want to touch on topics that are in the celebrity world or what's happening in social, you know, social, social things that mm -hmm. there was a ch child, a big case, he got shot, etc. So mm -hmm. this is opening up that platform where, yeah, Puff Puff Confessions, where um I don't need no Puff Puff. I'm, I'm, boy, I'm an you amateur. Talk about Puff, you talk about Puff Puff, boy, y'all gonna turn us into Snoop Dogg around right? Look, hey, hey, look. Commentary. Look, I, I zone out when I'm, when I'm feeling good, like, Mm -mm. No, I'm I, like I, I I I can't do it anymore like I used to. I, it, no it, it, I like that. No fly zone. I like that. I, I I can I can throw that one in there too. I like that. Right. So yeah. So we definitely gonna need that because like I said, I definitely won't. I definitely gotta address these. We got a internet. lot of stuff. I gotta oh, address this, this, these internet relationship coaches I see on the internet. I got a problem right now. There Ooh. you go. So you more, uh, more to yeah, expect yeah. to that, you guys. So yeah. bear with us. Of course, Champagne Confessions will be on tomorrow with mm -hmm. the ladies. But you know, we're we're just trying to expand the channel. So you know, you know, I love none of y'all love to see us, but sometimes the men need to want, want to talk about you know some things. So you know, it, it's a taboo that men don't have feelings. Men have to hide <laughs> behind. Say, Bad yeah, I, uh, never mind. I, I see. I'm probably me. True to the game. True to the game. Real Go sports. Forward. Real talk. Real talk. Uh, okay. Let me try to screenshot some of these. The uh -huh. Yeah, we're gonna take all these in consideration. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, we. Pup, pup yeah. confessions. We'll put that in there in the hat. Uh, you know? Let's see what else we got in here. <laughs> Malt liquor confessions. Malt, malt liquor confessions. Boy, that don't sound so hood right there. <laughs> I'm so hood. <laughs> oh, that, 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 look, 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 that, see, 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 the one I would say, see, Sam said, the, the one that I chose, the one that I, no, chose, no, 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 not, not, no, not the peanut butter confession. Okay, all, all right. <laughs> no, we're not talking well, about We decided that. against that one. Yeah, mm, I was just gonna say six mm. shots to the dome. That was gonna be that was gonna be the one right there. What was the other one? I just saw that. One. <laughs> I, mean, I ain't look. I don't want no part of that. That sounds like the FBI. <laughs> six shots to the dome, boy. Six shots. You gotta take. I, I, I can I can yeah, I can deal with six shots, but not six one six shots to the dome. Mm -mm, nope. <laughs> the shock factor. I like it. So it's some good ideas. We're gonna screenshot everything that you guys are putting together, mm -hmm. and um, I guess the, I'm gonna let them. That's all them. So I'm gonna let them mm -hmm. control that. I'm um, switch. <laughs> Y'all just want to see us hide. That's all y'all want. Y'all probably hide uh, typing all of this. You might well say the Afro Man fan clubs. 
<laughs> Russian cream? No. Whoa. Ooh. That don't even sound right. Oh, that's interesting. A, a, a bird's eye view. Bird's eye view. view. I like that. But I like that. It's a, it's a quite some good ones. So uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe we should do a poll on, you know, yeah, a few a of them and mm -hmm. maybe the get an idea of where everybody's feeling. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so that so that's gonna be, like you said, it's pretty much gonna be the male equivalent of champagne conventions. Like you say, it's gonna be sports talk, but more but not necessarily how y'all used to. But it's gonna be more so of the behind the stuff, like you say, entertainment, mm -hmm. uh relationships, uh social stuff, mm -hmm. uh, philosophical, what well, is just what just whatever y'all want to speak of. And, mm -hmm. and and definitely let us know. We doing this again. What do y'all want to see the next conversation be? Mm -hmm. yeah. not, oh, not only just for us, but for the ladies as well. Mm -hmm. We well, are always looking for show ideas. So again, man, um, um, it's one ninety nine. What we're going to start doing for these memberships? We're going to start doing some. Um, I'm going to be putting out some breakdowns on players just exclusively on Mad Mike membership. So it's only $1.99. We're gonna I'm gonna have exclusive videos, all right? Exclusive videos, team rankings, all that type of stuff. Exclusively, it's only $1.99. All right. Y'all know y'all we worth a blunt a day. All right. Y'all spend $1.99 at, 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 at the convenience store. It's mm. pass a blunt a month. Okay. Pass a blunt a month. All right. That's that's um, that's all I'm asking. That's the song. One blunt a month. <laughs> <laughs> One blunt a month. Spend it on I like this. No. <laughs> Devon no. said, I'm gonna need y'all sober no. for these type of shows. You do realize we sober all the time, right? We sober all the time. I look, y'all don't want to see me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nah, nah, they nah, they just see me, they just see me drunk for about a year and a half. <laughs> no, nah. we're gonna get y'all y'all night back, man. Definitely appreciate y'all. Um, like I said, just let us know what y'all think about the idea. Like I said, mm -hmm. I know it's gonna be a couple people that's not gonna be down for it. Um, I see. The I, I, language, you're not gonna get another cut, you're not gonna get a bunch of cursing, you're not gonna get a bunch of angry rants. It, this yeah. is not that type of show. Again, this is a much more relaxed conversation. This is about the conversations. All right. So this is what I see. Did. See, now you about to get into my element. Mm -hmm. and, and that's yeah. what y'all not ready for. Yeah, Kev has <laughs> been, we have had this in the books for a long time. So again, this is it, right, you 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 going in the Kev element right there. This okay. this is this is him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling y'all, y'all, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think y'all ready for this. I I mm -mm. Go, but definitely y'all make sure y'all go ahead and tune in tomorrow on Champagne Confession so y'all don't feel like it got hijacked from the men. And go check out the women. Maggie, what y'all got ready for tomorrow? You know what? This one is uh is on a project uh research right now. So, you know, just look out. It's gonna be an episode, but you know, Maggie got to put it together. So um oh, you'll know it before the night end or what the episode is gonna be about. And I'm taking suggestions, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, we had well, a viewer right. um requested show last week. Uh, we're just talking about toxic friends. So mm -hmm. if you have an idea on what you want to talk about, put it in the chat. We're looking for mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm definitely interested yeah. to hear everybody's yeah. feedback and what they want to hear the ladies talk about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, her next show is going to be porn addiction rules relationships. How about that? That's a real, you know, it's, mm. it's a real addiction. A mm. Addictions that you know, plagues the relationship, and it can mm -hmm. be, you know, See, you know, that's a whole romantic relationship. Story. That's family relationship. So it's like, honestly, addiction can be a problem because you can have a porn addiction, you can have a drinking addiction, you can smoking, you can have an addiction just to be, uh, a, you know, in the spotlight. You just I always got to have oh, attention. Oh, oh, I, I had a drinking problem. Oh, I had a drinking problem. I had a drinking mm -hmm. problem. That's why I don't drink no more. So so yeah. Mike so so Mike I already got our conversation already in my dome already see I told you okay okay see see I see I told y'all like I said there's a lot going on you don't know look 
But again, K Styles drive the creative around here. I'm right. I'm just so, a so 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 for the next time we do this show, our next topic is gonna be is dating prostitution culture now. Tune in to that next time, y'all. And as we say over here. Uh, we gotta come mm-hmm. up with a new. We gotta come up with a new phrase for this show. Oh, we we, we get that. We, we get we, that. we'll get that. We'll like get I said, that. like I said, at the, how we gonna close the show is we just here. Mm-hmm. We just here. Dude. Join the ride. <laughs> Lord have mercy.